Coming up on Ask the Tech Guy, help! How do I get my photos back? Next. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remotely, visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy brought to you by LastPass. LastPass manages every entry point to your business so you can mitigate risk in office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hey, everybody, Leo Laporte here. Time for Ask the Tech Guy. I got an email from Samantha in Bossier. Is that how you say it? Bossier, Bossier City, Los, uh, Louisiana. Not Los Angeles, Louisiana. I have a, tw Samantha says, help. I have a 2013 MacBook Pro, and I'm trying to free up some space. I have a lot of photos stored in Apple Photos, and I want to move some of them off my laptop and onto another computer. I haven't found a way to move just some of the photos. I only found a way to back up the entire iPhoto library. Is there a way to move a set of photos? Yep, there sure is, Samantha. In fact, Apple gives you three ways to do this. So let me take a look first at my Macintosh and my photos, most of them of my lovely wife, Lisa. I'm going to mention a couple of things here, actually, because the first thing that I think everybody needs to know is Apple has an unusual way of managing photos that is unique to Apple and iCloud. If you don't mind using iCloud, that's their cloud-based system where you store stuff up in the you know, up in the sky on Apple's servers. It is a great way to save space on your computer. So let me show you first the iCloud solution, and then I'll answer specifically your question. The first thing to do is to go into your Photos app. This is the Apple Photos app. And go to iCloud and take a look at the options available to you here. If you check the box iCloud Photos, it will automatically store your photos in the cloud. Now, that's a great way to back them up, and it makes them available to any other device logged in to your iCloud account, which includes Apple TVs, it includes laptops, desktops, and iPads, as well as your iPhone. And notice, once you check that box, there are two other settings. One setting keeps everything on your Mac. That's probably how you have it set right now. Store original photos and videos on the Mac. Now, that's going to take up a lot of space, but you don't need to do that. You can also save space by checking the other box, which says Optimize Mac Storage. This, we're in an analog to this, is also available on your iPad and iPhone. And what it will do is it'll move the high-quality originals to the cloud storage server, where it's absolutely safe, and keep smaller versions on your local computer. These versions will look just as good. They, they'll be just as beautiful on the screen, but they won't be as large. And they'll save you a lot of space on the hard drive. When you press the edit button or you download the button, Apple's photos will automatically download the full resolution version so you can work on that. But optimizing Mac storage for a lot of people is all you really need to do. That's the simplest solution. And frankly, it's the solution Apple wants you to adopt. And there's a couple of reasons. One, because it's a no-brainer. It'll just do it automatically. The other is because they charge for iCloud storage. And if you have a lot of photos, many hundreds of gigabytes of photos, iCloud storage can start to add up. I do it because I want a good backup for my photos. I don't ever want to lose any photos. But if you're concerned about the cost, there are two other ways you can do this. And let me show you those ways back on my Mac. So I'm going to go back to the Mac. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit because I zoomed in. And let's go to the menu here. First of all, you may want to select the photos you want to move off your computer. Now, again, iCloud is a great thing to have because it's going to be backup. But if you decide, oh, I just don't want these photos on my computer. I want to save space. You can select them manually um, by clicking on them. If you press Command click, you can select any arbitrary number of them. If you want to select a big range of them, move the slider to the left on the thumbnail size so you can see more photos. And then you can select a whole range by pressing the Shift key 
and dragging your mouse over them. There are other ways to select as too. You can select by memory. You can select by favorites. You can select by people. And you can select by geography. So there's lots of ways to select these photos if you want to do it more quickly. For instance, if you just want to select older photos, you can sort by date, go back to the top, and you know get rid of all the older photos, move them to another computer. Once you select the photos you want to move, now it's time to go to the menu, and in particular, the Export menu. It's right here under the File menu. And you have two different choices. You can export the photos with Command-Shift-E. This will give you the chance to change the photos to a common format that any other computer could read. If you want to save the photos, the originals as they were taken, use the second choice, export unmodified photos. You can exp export them to any storage device, including a USB drive or a USB key. If you have put information in those photos using a technique called IPTC, that's essentially the Associated Press uh, standard for putting information into press photos, but a lot of people use IPTC as a way to store photos. The problem is, or a way to categorize photos, that IPTC information, there's no standard way of rest restoring that or storing it. In this case, you could say, make it an XMP file, which would be a sidecar file. That's kind of complicated. Chances are you don't have any IPTC. You probably have what is called EXIF, E-X-I-F information, and that does get stored with the photos. Things like the time and date of uh, the photo when it was modified, uh, information about the camera used, things like that. You also have a choice here whether you use, use the file name. That's typically the name the camera gave it. Or if you've gone through your photos and titled them, you can use the title. You can also just use numbers, a sequential number. Or if you're taking it from an album, you could say, my trip to Truckee, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you can also say uh, what the subfolder format is, and that's for photos that are saved from your moments section. Once you press the export button, you'll be given a choice of where to save this, what folder to save it in. You can save it, as I said, on any external drive as well as an internal drive. You might want to create a new folder so that you have a special name for these photos that are going to be moved to the other computer. Photos to be moved, let's say. And you can create that folder anywhere you want in your hard drive and export it. As I said, you, you, know, you may want to do this to an external drive. You mentioned that you're running out of space on your computer. And uh, you may not even have enough space to export those photos. Remember, it's going to make a copy. It's not going to extract them. It's going to export them. So it's going to double the amount of storage they take just temporarily. So you might want to do it to a USB drive or a USB key. Once you've exported all those photos, then to save space, you're going to want to delete them. They'll still be selected. All you have to do is delete them by pressing Command and Delete or going to the menu. There you go. Way down at the bottom under Image. You can select Delete Photo, or as you see, you can just hit the Backspace key, and those photos will disappear. Incidentally, um, you can even hide a photo. If you hide the photo, uh, it will still be in your library. It just won't be visible in the whole photo uh, tray here. If you delete it, incidentally, and you have iCloud Photos turned on, a delete, as you would, I think, expect, will delete it everywhere. So at that point, if you're just exporting to another computer, you want to make sure that iCloud Photos is turned off. Otherwise, you'll delete even your backups of that photo. In this case, I'm not too worried about that. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. Your remote workforce is a vital part of your business, but it can also be a security risk. Transition easily from in-office to in-home with LastPass. LastPass enables IT to remain in complete control over which employees are accessing what, no matter where they are. Employees can securely share passwords across teams, and it reduces the risk of phishing schemes by never auto-filling passwords on suspicious websites. Get simple security across every access point with LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. lastpass.com slash twit. So I said there were t three ways to do it, so we've covered two ways. This one is the geekiest, but it's sometimes the most useful. So in order to find the original photos, we actually have to take advantage of a feature in the Apple file system. It's a little weird, and it's unique to Apple. The fact that sometimes what looks like a single file isn't. 
we go to the pictures folder, that's where your photos are stored, there's a thing called the photos library. And you probably wondered, look, mine's 16 gigabytes. How do I, you know, extract photos from that? Well, it turns out that's not a file. That's a package. And we can see what's inside by right-clicking on it and selecting Show Package Contents. Apps and even databases like this on the Macintosh that look like a single file with a single icon really are folders. This Photos Library is actually a folder contains all sorts of other stuff. And the key here is this Originals folder. This is where your original photos live and movies completely intact and unmodified. Now, if you've spent a lot of time editing those photos, this may not be the ideal, but this is, this is where the originals are. And you can get them all. Now, notice this is probably not as good a system because the Apple has, in their infinite wisdom, reorganized all my photos. They've put, they've put it in 15 different folders labeled 0 through 9 and A through F. And inside the folders are the actual files. <laughs> uh, but they're, but they're, yeah, the file names uh, are not completely indicative of what they are. So it's probably a good idea to go and do this through Apple's Photos app. But I often will choose this as a good way to back up all my original photos because you can copy them. The problem is you just don't know what they are because of this kind of weird file scheme, this naming scheme. You can tell what type they are by the extension. HEIC is the Apple High Efficiency Image Codec. DNG is the Adobe RAW format. MOV is a movie file. There's also JPEGs in here. There might be PNGs and other file formats. ARW is my uh, RAW files from my Sony camera. So these extensions haven't been changed, but boy, the names sure have, and they've been all munged up. And this is just Apple's way of doing things. They do the same thing in iTunes. So it's nice to know the original photos exist here, but organizationally, this might be a bit of a challenge. If you want to kind of keep, an, keep photos from a certain time period or a certain trip or of a certain person, it's a lot easier to use the export command within Apple Photos. I did want to show you, though, that all those photos exist undamaged in the Photos Library. Just right-click on it, Show Package Content, and go to the folder that says Original Folders, Originals. That's where all of your, uh, all of your photos live. Now, this really opens up a whole can of worms about the Apple file system and the way Apple organizes files. And I think this would be a very good topic for our Hands-On Mac show. So I'm going to do a Hands-On Macintosh that covers how Apple handles files. It's very different from any other operating system. It kind of goes back to the early days of the Macintosh computer. But once you understand it, it's actually pretty logical, and it helps a little bit in organization and figuring out what's going on in your system. So uh, this is a little bit simpler. Just use the export command for photos. But if you want to dig a little deeper into how Apple organizes files on the computer, then tune in the next Hands on Mac. We're going to spend some time with that. Hands on Mac is available at twit.tv slash HOM. You can also subscribe in your favorite podcast tool. And of course, we're at twit.tv slash ATG for Ask the Tech Guy. Great question, Samantha. I hope one of those three methods uh, works for you and helps you free up some space without losing any photos. That's it for Ask the Tech Guy. If you've got a question for me, something you'd like me to talk about, email Ask the Tech Guy at twit.tv. Maybe you'll be featured next week. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email askthetechguy at twit.tv.